Hey, Kinder Guppies, it's Mr. McComb again. I've got another read aloud to share with you. This time, it's a fiction book called Tana's Owl. Are you ready? Here we go! Before we get started with the story, Kinder Guppies, I want to remember that our subject, our focus this week, is all about nocturnal animals. Owls are a nocturnal animal. Now, this is a fiction story, so it's all made up. But as we listen to it, I want to see if you can find any clues that show you how this owl lives as a nocturnal animal. And that means we should be seeing signs that it's awake during the night. Here's a note from the author. It says, a greeting from Rachel. I had a lot of strange pets growing up. That was how things were way back. In the Arctic of many decades ago, animals were around us all the time. We didn't just need them to survive. They were our companions. We used to respect them. Our ancient stories even said they were family. Inuit have lots of names. That's because some of them are magical. Tana is one of my magical names. It means that one over there. Owls are magical too. Inuit were always careful way back to note whatever belonged to the land, sea, or sky. And the most magical animals were those who brought these things together. Owls, you see, can fly, but they are raised on the land, so they bring land and sky together. I'm about to tell you a little bit about my owl. In truth, it wasn't even my owl. I don't think you can really own an animal or a piece of land or anything, actually. You can only bring things together, learn to help, to care. I wonder if my father wanted me to know that. So before we go on, Kinder Guppies, it sounds to me like the author, Rachel, wrote this story about her own experience, about her own life. And as an Inuit, she is sharing a traditional story with us. Let's listen. Summer began and Tana's owl arrived. Her father had returned from hunting. With him, he brought an owl. Why did father get me such an ugly thing, thought Tana. The baby owl was round, gray, brown. Its eyes were big and yellow. Its beaky mouth seemed wide enough to swallow its own head. But, Tana thought, it's somehow cute. You'll have to take good care of it, father told her. It has no mother. It'll need to eat two or three times a day. That night, Tana set her alarm for four o'clock in the morning. She had the shortest sleep of her life. She had to catch lemmings. There was no bird food, and the owl wouldn't have eaten it anyway. But her brothers and sisters helped. Tana named the owl Ookpik, the Anuktituk for owl. Ookpik lived in her father's workshop. Tana thought of the bird as a she. Line the floor with papers, said her father, as it will poop a lot. A Nuktatuk, kinder guppies, is the name of one of the Inuit languages, and Ukpik is the Anuktatuk word that means owl. When Ukpik did not get her food right away and early in the morning, she would stomp her feet. She would sway back and forth. She would chomp her beak. At least she can communicate, Tana thought to herself. After feeding Ookpik, Tana would stare into the bird's light golden eyes. She wondered if owls had thoughts. Father, does Ookpik know she's an owl? asked Tana. It knows that you feed it, father said, smiling. Ookpik soon tired Tana out. 
the owl became more and more demanding. No matter how much Tana fed her, Ookpik still stomped, swayed, chomped. Tana wondered if the bird was sick. She took Ookpik outside and placed her on the ground. What do you want, you alien thing? Tana demanded. Ookpik just stared at her. Then, creepily, the owl turned her head around backwards, watching the family dogs. Looking at Ookpik like that made Tana's own neck feel sore. Soon, Tana's brothers and sisters grew sick of catching lemmings. Owls need lemmings, Tana protested, but they'd seen Ookpik eat. They said she was gross. Can Ookpik eat fish? Tana asked father. It can probably eat whatever fits in its mouth, he told her. Soon Ookpik was eating any kind of meat or fish, even caribou. The owl was no longer cute. Feeding her was an awful chore. Ookpik's beak was sharp as blades. She snatched at her food. Tana had to wear gloves. One rainy day, Tana took Ookpik outside. The owl was no longer gray and brown. She was growing white plumes. The feathers on her feet were thick as polar bear fur. Her talons were like little black knives. Ookpik looked around as though bored. Then she stared at the sky, as though to say, I should be up there. Tana picked up the owl and moved her up and down. Ookpik was too young to fly, but she started to flap her wings. Maybe, thought Tana, pretending to fly will make her feel better. Well, Kinder Guppies, at this point in the story, Mr. Macomb is wondering if maybe Ookpik is sad or sick because she's living during the daytime along with Tana and her family. I wonder, would Ookpik feel better if she was awake at night? Summer ended. Tana had to leave her community for school. She worried about Ookpik, who had been left behind and had never flown. But Tana was happy to not get up at four in the morning, or to catch lemmings, or to see stomping, or to hear chomping. When the next summer arrived, Tana came home. Ookpik was gone. It was growing, father told her. The owl didn't belong to us. It had to fly free. She flew, thought Tana, and she smiled. One day, Tana went walking. Even though Ookpik had been so much work, she missed the owl. A little. Tana picked an arctic poppy, its golden petals like frozen sunlight. Then she was startled by movement. Something white. An Ookpik! The beautiful owl landed on a rocky hill, purpled with tiny flowers. It blinked at Tana. Its eyes were the same color as Tana's poppy. My Ookpik? Tana wondered. Bird and girl watched each other for a long time. Arctic winds stirred Tana's black hair and the owl's white feathers. Tana didn't know if this was Ookpik. She wanted to believe, though. She wanted to think that Ookpik had come by just to show how lovely she'd become. Maybe, Tana thought as she walked away, beauty is worth some work. Well, we've come to the end of our story, Kinder Guppies, and we've seen how Tana has come to realize that taking care of a little pet is a lot of responsibility. And Tana's come to realize that even though she took care of Ookpik, Ookpik wasn't hers. Tana says that all animals are free. And this was a good story. Mr. McComb appreciated it but I didn't see a lot of evidence of Ookpik being a nocturnal animals. Early in the story, when Tana said 
that Ookpik had big eyes, I thought, yes, owls have big, big eyes so they can see good in a dark night. But then there is no more information about it in the story. So here's my challenge for you. Can you and your grown-up go onto the internet and research snowy owls? Maybe snowy owls aren't nocturnal. Have fun, take care, and I'll talk to you later.